what is up guys welcome to um another quick video so the brand new hackintosh build just gonna move the camera in position uh, is basically underway uh, what i'm doing i'm just spending a bit of time um prepping the uh water cooling system uh, which is okay, the bag, which is here so if you can see that and we've got the new uh, micro uh, 8x motherboard which is just turned up uh, which is great this is a skylake motherboard uh, so it's an 1151 socket motherboard uh, which is going to support um, my um, 6700k so at the moment i'm just putting this together this is a deep cool uh, water cooler so i'm just going to change position at the moment and uh, we're just going to quickly set that up um, obviously this is uh, part two to the video which is setting up the water cooler and um, just having a quick in-depth look um, at the motherboard. Uh, Why well, I chose this motherboard because I do have a Skylake motherboard um, at the moment uh, in my system, uh, which is uh, an MSI one. And the new build I've got, I first of all bought, just getting the crap out of the way, so about the best, is one of these. This is the ASUS one. Uh, H110M. I'll show you a lot more detail when we get to the uh, build it itself. Obviously, this one's just about um, putting a water cooler together um, and showing you the motherboard. So, this one um, is not a very good board for Hackintosh, so avoid this ASUS motherboard. Um, yeah, it's very bad uh, for Hackintosh. This is the best one um, after loads of research. I wanted the best motherboard for Hackintosh possible. Um, this is the best one you can get. So, I uh, need to say more, let's look at this bit and uh, get this bit done. Yeah, we'll just get this little bit done. So, at the moment, I'm just putting the, um, the brackets on for the 1151 socket um, connection, which is here. Um, it's quite an easy process. These brackets here are for the water cooler itself, and I'll show you that in a second. But first of all, um, I'm going to go to the second one here. I am following instruction manuals, I always keep the instruction manuals handy uh, for when I'm building stuff like this. This should just uh, go in like this and this should, in theory, uh, go over the top, like so, oh, just falling out, sorry about that, that's me shaking. So we're going to go to the second hole, and I'm just going to hover this down. Go to the top of it, I suppose. That one's sat to the phrase perfect. For some reason, this one's been a been an asshole. Let's try on the other end. Let's just put that there, and let's just go around. Yep, there you go. That just snapped into place like that. Um, is that correct? Yep, so we've got the uh, two top ones and the two end ones. This is a Skylake uh, connection, so obviously I don't want to uh, mess this up and lose all the screws. I was going to do an unboxing for this, but unboxings are getting a bit tedious now, I think. I think it's best to get to the nitty gritty uh, to start off with. So I'm just going to try and slide that over without breaking it. This pushes itself up. Ow. So that's that into place, making sure these are, are quite strong. And then we've got one more which is uh, going to go in like that. Push it on and that's that first bit done. Uh, which is cool. That's going to go at the back um, of the uh, motherboard um, and our water cooler is going to uh, connect to it like this. So I'll just get the water cooler, cooler out of the box. Okay, so this is the water cooler which um, I've had, oh shit, just touch the thermal paste which is not good. Might have to apply some more to that. So this is the water cooler. Um, for some reason I bought it brand new and it's not got a protective plate over the top of that so that's something I'm going to have to report to the supplier 
um, for that. Oh, there it is. It's obviously just fallen off. Like that. That's meant to go like that. Um, and these are going to go here. Basically get screwed in. So we're just going to look at that now. I'm just going to put this back in the box for now. Um, I'm doing all this prep work. So when we come to the actual build itself, um, it's going to be... Uh, quite easy uh, to do so I'm just looking how these guys have try not to touch this thermal paste have put this on I think that shows like that and I've got to find the screws that screw it together because they don't really it, these diagrams are not very good at, at all, I'm telling you. So it should be four, so I think it's these ones here. So I'm going to have to get a Phillips screwdriver uh, very quickly, um, and I'll be right back. Right, so I've got my screwdrivers. Now, now I'm going to try and uh, put these brackets on. Um, so they're secure. Yep, that fits. And I want to try and not get me hand. Oh, that's come off. It doesn't help. As you guys know, um, I suffer from the shakes, uh, which doesn't help when you come in doing stuff like this. Really, I should get someone to help me with this. But I am an independent person that likes to uh, sort of figure things out. And get things done myself. I, I don't like sort of relying um, on people um, to do a job that I can try um, my very best um, to do. So I'm just gonna oh, I'll drop that screw. It is quite upsetting when you suffer with this sort of thing and you know you want to get things done. I suppose that's life. We've got to deal. Oh, where did that go? We've got to deal with our um, disabilities, should I say, um, the best way we can, really. Um, I actually don't think that's for that because that's got like a, a hex on it. Oh, well, that goes in from the bottom. By the looks of it in the manual, guys, this you turn the other way, and it looks like this gets screwed in from the bottom, uh, which might make um, life a little bit easier. Just got to get this magnetic thing in oh my god this is going to be a nightmare for me guys I, I really don't care about the thermal paste because um, I am going to reapply some oh yeah I've got the first one in I'm going to be putting some MX paste on this uh, anyway is that correct? is that screwing in? yeah First one's in, which is good. But we want to make this, you know, the the most stable, quickest, most silent hackintosh I can for uh, the money, uh, really. Uh, something that is going to, going to um, shall I say, surpassed something that Apple uh, sell in their shop. Mind you, with the specs they're producing these days, anything can. But we want this uh, super quick. You know, at the end of the day, it's going to be used as my main machine uh, for quite some time. And I want to make this look good. And feel good at the same time, if that makes sense. 
and it's looking absolutely stunning with you guys. Really nice little build. Um, I'm still um, on two minds about the case, uh, which is a bit of a pain in the bum. But um, I will get a case soon and I will get that uh, next day delivery shipped. I'm actually hoping I put the right bracket on actually. Just try it like this. This is the way to try it out. The way to try it out, make sure you put the right bracket on it, put the thing on it. I don't think I put the right packet on, guys. Is it spin, what does it mean? So, there we go. So, if you look at what I've just done there, hopefully that's the way it's going to sit um, on the system and these. I'm just going to screw on the top um, and hold it into position. It is a little bit tight, um, I must admit. But what I'm going to do is temporarily screw these on for now, uh, very lightly, um, because I want these to stay in place. And I don't want the thermal paste to. It's going to move the the, the wire out of the way. I'm just going to put this right here. And this is how it's going to sit uh, on the system. Uh, which is very, very cool. So, that's that bit done. And the fan. Obviously, this is the radiator. Uh, sorry, this is the radiator here. This is the fan that goes on front. I may use this one, but I'm going for a green in colour um, on the build. Um, so... It might be a case of uh, getting some uh, green fans, um, green rim fans, shall I say. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop all this gobbledygook uh, back in the bag. That can stay like that in a box because that's absolutely fine. That basically is ready to be installed. So it's always about, you know, prep work, uh, you know, getting the prep work done first. Put this in so it's not going to get damaged and put this away safe and then I can show you the motherboard um, what we've got for the build. Get this and basically just cover this up so it doesn't get um, damaged. So put this back in the box as well. This so we can get the um, motherboard out. We can show that and I'll explain some things to you guys which are going to help you out with your Hackintosh. So, put this away for now, move all this crap. This is the motherboard I chose and the reason why I chose this motherboard is because it is a good value motherboard, it's a gigabyte motherboard. If you're building a Hackintosh in general, don't go with ASUS guys, yeah, don't go with anything but gigabyte. Gigabyte is basically the same sort of chipset that's used in Max, um, the, the, the actual foundation for it. So I'm just going to open this up, and then we've got the manuals here, we've got the driver CD here, and we've got some uh, SATA cables, which is great, two SATA cables, they would definitely come in handy. Uh, we've got the IO shield here, and we've got a very, very, very tiny micro uh, ATX uh, motherboard, which is what I really wanted. I want to build a really small, uh, powerful Hackintosh, and I'm going to pop that off. And here it is. I'm um, just going to make sure I've got you in frame, which I have. Um, and this is basically the ball. So, this is an 1151 socket uh, motherboard, uh, obviously by Gigabyte. Um, it supports 7th gen and 6th generation uh, CPUs from i3, or should I say from Celeron, all the way up to the latest Core i7 processors. So this board in general is future proof uh, for the time being. 
Uh, we've got two um, uh, dim slots for RAM. This supports up to 30, 32 gigabytes, shall I say, of uh, DDR4 memory. Uh, for now, we're going to be putting 16 gigabytes, so we're going to be putting two 8 gigabyte sticks of DDR4 running at 2133 megahertz. We've got the power connections here and here. We've got a uh, PCIe uh, graphics uh, connector here. Uh, four SATA ports, uh, these are six gigabyte uh, SATA ports. USB 3.0 header. We've got all our um, bits to connect our motherboards. So we've got the, um, you know, the power, the HD, LEDs, all that good stuff. We've got front, front USB 2 header, front USB 1 header. So this is for basically a case. Um, the audio. You've got your comms and you've got your TPM uh, connection as well. So a very, very tidy uh, motherboard in dig. So we're going to look around the side here. Uh, as you can see, we've got a video, we've got a DVI, we've got HDMI, we've got two 2.0 uh, USBs, we've got two 3.0 USBs, we've got another two 2.0 USBs, uh, Ethernet, and we've got our audio connections there. So, this is going to be, a, what should I say, a pretty powerful uh, Hackintosh uh, when it's done. Um, I can't wait to get this built for you guys and build it on camera, because we're going to be doing that uh, in the next video, uh, getting this built. Um, I've got another Hackintosh project coming, which is the Sexy Hack project. Uh, that's coming, I'm just waiting on some parts for that. But while we're waiting on parts for that, I thought we'd get cracking with um, this Hackintosh build. Um, to just, this is just basically to wet your whistle. Um, and then once this is done, uh, we can run some gig benches on it, we can run some benchmarks um, and see where we go. So expect the next video to be uh, during the week. And that is gonna be the build of the system. We're gonna be looking at the CPU, graphics card, RAM, the whole lot, we're going to be building it and we're going to be installing Mac OS Sierra onto this system in one full jam-packed Hackintosh video. So as always guys, thanks for listening. If you have enjoyed this video, a like rating would definitely be appreciated. And as always, I will definitely catch you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.